Hello, everyone. Hi, John. Hello, Davide. How are you? Very good yourself. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Yeah, it's a uh, it's an incredible day out here on the California West Coast. Weather's always great. Beautiful, beautiful to hear. We are in the cold side of uh, of another of another of another geography. Uh, I'm very happy about and very happy to start this conversation about gaming together. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, David. It's been so great working with y'all at Free Name. So excited to talk about the future of games that's happening right in front of our eyes today. Just, just amped. Likewise, it's a very hot topic. Gaming is in our hearts and our souls and our daily routines, and so we love this this talk and also bringing Web three capabilities to the gaming side. Um, I would suggest we, we leave a few minutes for all the participants to enter in the various rooms. We are live here. We are live in other channels. So let's chit chat a bit. You got it. So there's, there's only a million incredible games and trends to talk about. So <laughs> do you have any that you'd like to talk about? If not, I can happily volunteer my favorite games right now. Please go further with your favorite games. I'm eager to know. Well, you know, I'm going to actually recommend a game that you saw during the Game Awards with Jeff Keighley, um, and that's going to be mm -hmm. a game called Dredge. This is a, an, I think you could still call this an indie game, but Dredge and Dave the Diver are two games that have really sort of broken up this incredible, it broken open, I should say, this indie trend in the last year. It's super cool. It's kind of like Lovecraftian horror meets fishing game. It's just, it's incredible. It's on the Switch. It's super low pressure. It's when it's not, terrifying it's kind of a cozy game it's it's just a ton of fun so good nice nice i would i would love to try it and i see you have john.gaming but i guess we'll come to that a bit later that thanks to you guys i have john.gaming excited to talk about it <laughs> i do have david.gaming unsurprising and awesome <laughs> wonderful so let's wait i see that uh we are and on the O3, so we wait the O5, and then we can kickstart, right? In. Beautiful. How long are you in the gaming industry, John? I know you're a top voice all over, but how long exactly? I don't know. I never asked you. Well, top voice just means somebody who talks too much, which I guess is exactly me. So <laughs> it's whatever that means. Uh, boy, I've been in the gaming industry in some fit or form for about now 17 years um which has been so much fun and that's been directly contributing to the industry that's been sort of on a side long basically managing teams that hired for games but that wasn't our primary work but i've always just been in love with this industry uh since being a you know consumer of games at the age of four years old playing my my nes um but yeah professionally for now 17 years you're you're a very important person of the industry. That's very nice to hear. I'm very glad to have you with us. Well, thank you so much. I don't know if I could accept that title, but I can certainly accept being mutually amped to be here. Wonderful. And since we are talking about your background, uh, so we just start right in and explain. And if you can tell us about your background, in 10, 15 minutes, what was also your very first gaming experience? That's something nice to know. And if you tell the audience better what you've done with tech giants like Apple, uh, and now you are uh, you created Gamers for Love, what is that? A bit all of your journey. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so excited, maybe even in reverse chronological order. So Games for Love is a nonprofit that was founded by a visionary named Nathan Blair. I had the amazing good fortune to be invited to come on and work with them, much like we work together, Davide. Though this is a nonprofit, gamesforlove.org, where we do one thing. We put video games into children's hospitals to replace pain with play, because we know that when you feel better, you heal better. And that's what we're in the business of. And we love what we do. Uh, it's incredible to see kids really have their lives changed, staying connected to their families, their ability to have meaning and purpose, even in the midst of some really dark times. So that's what we do at Games for Love. I head up people and culture, and I get to kind of play in the partnership space as well. Always looking for donations to help the kids more. Uh, plug, plug. But to go all the way back, you know, gosh, 
the tech giants that you mentioned there, David, would would definitely include Apple and Amazon, uh, to name to name just the two. Um, after Apple and Amazon, I pivoted into the AI startup space, taking my sort of AI backstory from Apple and Amazon, parlaying that into the startup space to live sort of every Silicon Valley dweller's dream, which is to take a company public, which now I get to finally say on my bucket list, I've, I've checked off, which was absolutely amazing. But you know, my time at Apple and Amazon, I couldn't be more grateful for those amazing teams. Anybody here who maybe even some folks in the audience who happen to be on those teams just want to be you know, so transparent about saying those people made the success that we experienced both as a team and as a brand since possible because those teams built the Apple Watch teams. They built some of the most incredible teams as well as some of the first gaming teams at Apple. And that was back, if everybody remembers when Game Center came around at first and then Arcade is the next evolution. Uh, and then who knows what's in the future. Uh, Amazon games, of course, everybody knows New World. Uh, it's one of the bigger games that people have, have really enjoyed in the last couple of years, had a big debut. Um, and then now it's alongside a couple of other games that are that are trucking along, doing doing well on Twitch at least. Um, and so it was really exciting to to support the teams that had so much to do with the success of the hiring there. Um, and then of course at Soundhound.ai is the the name of that company. If you ever want to check them out, they are a sound AI. So they work in natural language processing (NLP), basically with voice to text that, or I should say, voice to meaning. Uh, that actually allows you to speak naturally to technology. Um, and they're they're doing awesome stuff over there. It was really great to be part of that team. Um, I stepped aside to spend the first year with our first baby uh, back in January of 2023. And we're actually celebrating her one year birthday today, right now as we speak. So this is my one year anniversary of taking time to spend with our brand new baby to focus on awesome stuff like partnering with you guys and Games for Love and to find all of this incredible meaning um, and to really develop a deep sense of gratitude, not only for the ability to be connected to an industry that means so much to me, but with my amazing family and honestly, to get to learn about cool, new, crazy stuff like Web3. Like after Googling WTF is Web3, I found free name and then this conversation laughed, uh, came about. So yeah, that's that's my backstory all the way up through like 20 seconds ago. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that with us. Firstly, happy birthday to all your family. And of course, we are very happy to celebrate that together. And also very nice to know all of the industry that you've seen growing, you've seen developing from quite every corner, right? Yeah. That's impressive. And since you saw all of the industry developing, uh, all of the key player expanding, going to IPO, expanding services, technologies, what do you think are the trends that we can foresee for the gaming industry? What we will look in 2024? What is coming, on your opinion, also in the next five years? What are the technology shaping? What do you think it will be? And, and the current status also starting from there. So there's so much that I'm excited for with games. And there's really three trends that of this crazy cloud of, of things that are contributing to this estimated 13.4% compounded average growth rate, which is what some of the larger consulting firms estimate the games industry will continue to grow out over the next 15 years. That puts us at about a trillion dollar industry right around 2030. So that's you know on par with any household item parked in your garage or in your house, including what's in your pocket, your phone. Um, that's a huge industry. What's contributing to that, I, I believe, are these three trends uh, in terms of what the future growth looks like. Uh, first, we can't have any conversation about technology without AI coming into the conversation. And I think that as you're seeing an acceleration uh, and a movement towards general artificial intelligence, which is this you know buzzword right now that OpenAI is saying that they're going to define, and it's a really intriguing conversation. Um, some believe that we're already there. I who knows what that looks like, but as AI continues to evolve, it's certainly going to evolve how games are developed. Um, much like everything else, the reason that Moore's law is pretty much obsolete now is as technology is able to develop technology you don't get a doubling of power and a reduction of speed by two and price by two every year 
you're probably going to see a four, eight, and so on and so forth X of geometric growth of technology speed. Now that means job displacement or a better way to put it, available time for all of us. And in a world where every single day, approximately 830,000 people start playing games for the first time on planet Earth, which is an actual and nearly down to the, the one digit uh, accurate calculation based upon adoption of internet, accessibility of mobile technologies. In that world, so many of those people are going to be playing games as their first move. And most people, especially in developing parts of the world, their primary access point to the internet is a phone. And the most ideal place to play games is, of course, on, on that device, especially if they're networking, connecting with everybody. That brings me to the second trend, which I actually believe is probably the biggest one we've already seen, not necessarily the biggest one on the horizon. And that is this term called UGC, which is user generated content, not exclusive to games. Certainly not. This is not the only industry where you're going to hear UGC. It is going to be a buzzword on par with anything else you've, you've heard in the last few years soon. Probably already is. Um, really powerful examples would be UEFN, Unreal Engine for Fortnite, uh, and of course, Roblox. These are games that have become platforms. And as such, they're creating millionaires. So it's very likely that our kids... Davide, if you if you decide to, to go down that route uh, and you have a one year celebration for a birthday soon for a kiddo, it's likely that those two little humans that we're talking about there, my daughter and your kiddo, are going to be actively designing things in these environments and selling them in an entrepreneurial setting because it's already happening and it's super, super exciting. I think it's a new economy that we've only started to understand and it's particularly exciting when you look at what Web3 unlocks in that space. And that's that's honestly, that trend and that wave that we see on the horizon is exactly why I'm so excited to be working with you, Davide, around all this Web3 stuff, because that's the third trend. The third trend is Web3, because it is only through blockchain technology that we can create these non-fungible successes and get value out of everything that we do as gamers. Perfect example, if anybody in the audience plays World of Warcraft, you can type in your slash played. You type slash and type the word played and hit enter. And it will tell you, for better or worse, how many hours, minutes, and seconds you've spent playing that game. And mine, it's it's funny. It's like the, the taboo thing. You don't want anybody to know your, your slash played. Mine's higher than it probably ever should be, but I'm very proud of it. But I think about that often, and I imagine in a world where Web3 blockchain allows you to take that that time, take what you've spent accomplishing there, and potentially add that value to some other experience, right? Like what if every single second you're spending is tallying towards something, basically like mining for some sort of a, a coin, um, except you're doing that with all of your time spent in games. You can certainly find qu close parallels. You spend time and processor power mining for perhaps a Bitcoin, yes? You also spend time mining for product or for uh, items, I should say, as they drop uh, in games. So very similar. That, I think, will lead us to kind of a cool topic we can talk about here or elsewhere, which is item rentals, which is a huge part of the Web3 games world to come. But those are the three trends I would probably highlight. Thank you, John. So let me get this straight. The first trend is hardware, the mobile that we are using more and more for gaming. Mm -hmm. And I remember like my very first game at television with a device attached where, or at the computer were very primitive compared to the one I play right now mobile. So I can definitely relate to that. The second trend, tell me if I get it right, is the underlying technology. So AI as we want to call and the technology, the software empowering the games. And the third, you mentioned Web3. And the most astonishing thing also is that I didn't know, thanks for sharing with us, 135,000 people play new game or they are new to gaming every day. Is that correct? Davide, it's actually 835,000 uh, per day start using the internet for the first time through a phone. And most oh, of those people, the first thing they'll do is download a game. So yeah, it's the numbers are, are, are incredible. It's why this industry is growing so fast. Unbelievable. Thanks for sharing. I was 700,000 less in my accounts. <laughs> Give or take, That's right? Like, yeah, yeah. 
rounding error. <laughs> okay, that's that's really interesting. And yes, like as you said, rentals of items or profile or different or different features of a it's it's very active and blockchain can bring an advantage. Uh, domaining as as we will see can bring an advantage. So I totally agree with you. Whether it's EI plus blockchain on a new device, we will see also with the Oculus what will be the enhanced gaming. I think we are quite early there, but we are arriving very fast. So it's a it's an entertainment to be discovered more and more and more. Absolutely. Thanks for that. David, just to underline that too, we have a comment from Paige Howe that says it seems enjoyment rather than money as a new currency for younger generations. Oh, thank you for highlighting that page. You such a beautifully and elegantly framed way to talk about, uh, I completely align with you. I think that yeah. especially you look towards generations that are coming into sort of digital natives, which means people that literally were born into a world that was connected and, and know no other world, maybe aren't quite as, as gray in the temples as, as myself, gray everywhere, but anyway, uh, what you're talking about there, I truly believe is, is, is real. And so that's why web three connecting people with enjoyment that doesn't just happen once. And then is this ephemeral moment that disappears? Great that that can happen, but even better, I think when you're able to create value out of every second you're spending doing something across all platforms, including possibly even your income, which comes around to some other questions, but I'll, I'll, I'll close my mouth and simply say, I think that's a beautiful way to say it. Absolutely. I agree with you and Paige. Um, let me see, because we, we talked about the three main driver of the future trends. And one of these you mentioned was Web3. And this is also the motivation why we're speaking together and doing something together. Perhaps do you want to, to get deeper a bit on that? What do you think? Web3 is growing rapidly and gaming are growing rapidly. So there is multiple use cases. And we wanted to, to extend that with you um, on the industry, what you see, the added values on the decentralization, where it can bring new features, where it can enhance other features. You registered the dot .gaming. You registered your name, as we can see, John.gaming. Yeah. Also, why you did that? Where do you see value? We, I know the answer, but let's expand also for our audience. Yeah, I, I invested in in my name before we even started working together, which you know was is so exciting. And I'm excited to own John.gaming because I believe that one day it will probably be worth more than my house, frankly, because of this incredible centralization. Um, it's funny, decentralizing of the web creates this ability for us to centralize our identities in a way that we're only starting to understand. And there's all kinds of bridges to cross for Web3, right? There's DNS support, meaning if I'm, you know, any given person in the world, if I type in something in my browser bar, which is how I'm used to accessing things, will I find my way to Web3 domains? The answer soon is yes, right? Like across the board for a variety of reasons, who knows when that might be, but there's so many people working on this that that will be the case soon. The second piece I think is when we are able to centralize our identities Right now, the most common version of that that might be coming to people's minds is a link tree or like a link in bio, which is where all of the different things, your Twitch page, your Instagram page, your Facebook, so on and so forth, your TikTok, you make it easy for people to find you. Web3 not only accomplishes that goal, which is vital and certainly important, but it also creates an environment where alongside all those things, they're also able to interact with your wallet. And so a world where you're able to say rent out can kind of go back to the most poignant example I can think of right now in a world where, you know, Davide, you're, let's say, playing a uh, uh, Final Fantasy MMORPG that I also play and you're a prolific player, you're like world world renowned, or, or maybe you're just really good or maybe you're just really lucky and you had this item drop for you that has a 0.001% drop rate, right? And I really want that item. And I'm also trying to, to do the same things you're doing. <clears throat> In a world that we will inhabit soon through Web3, I'll be able to rent that item from you because it has an NFT. It's a non-fungible token attached to it. I can rent it, I can use it, and then it goes back to you as opposed to the typical experience in games, which is everyone gets their own unique things. It's very much like the real world, right? Like if we were living in, in a medieval castle right now and you forged an amazing sword and I needed to borrow that, I would probably give you some you know, gold or whatever coin and, and go on and, and use that. Um, 
And so it's kind of coming back to that right there. And I think that when we go to dot gaming as a central place and why I think y'all are, are brilliant for working to make this our central sort of gaming identities, I do see a world where the first thing somebody does before they become a creator is they sign up for that, you know, Davide dot gaming, for example, because you want that to be where people come for everything gaming, especially if you're building your world around that, which I saw a poll recently that one in four high school seniors in the United States want to be professional creators as their actual profession. And of them, approximately 25% say video games are their key focus. So that's one in eight people right now graduating from high school in the United States are saying they want to be basically game streamers and creators. What a perfect way for them to centralize that for, you know, whether you're Chris.gaming, you're Jennifer.gaming, or you're, you know, the wild child 48.gaming or whatever you want to be, you control your identity. It's up to you. Totally spot on. And as you said before, um, content generated by user, it's a enlarging, enlarging. And it's very interesting to see all of the users doing their own content. And it, it's a world that it's expressing itself more and more. Um, I am looking forward to, to enable the the transferability of certain feature in game. I think it's awesome and we will definitely like that. And are there any exciting projects or initiative that you want to tell us or highlight in this space? Yeah, well, in the broader gaming space, there's really two things that I, for my own reasons, would love to tell everybody about. One is Games for Love, which we touched on briefly. Games for Love is a nonprofit. We put video games in children's hospitals. We're always looking for new volunteers to come and take part in what we do. This actually has a lot to do with the second thing I'm excited to talk about because we really strive to make sure that people that volunteer with us have a chance to get real world games industry experience. This industry is something a lot of people sort of dream of being part of. It's notoriously hard to get into. Rarely are you just walking by and finding an open door. Usually you have to sort of pry it open over the course of years and several interviews and that's not helped by the fact that there's this wave of layoffs happening in games as there's this adjustment from 2020 where you saw doubling or even tripling of the of the industry in some cases and that you know wasn't super tenable and now it's the sort of hangover from some of that um though there are some decisions that have been made that i certainly don't agree with from a business leadership standpoint um it is understandable that there would be some contraction of an industry that grew so rapidly so quickly so Call them growing pains, call it an industry in its adolescence, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's a lot of people getting laid off. And that's the second thing. So let's say you're one of those people or you're looking at an industry that you want to get into that the line for the door only seems to get longer. Something like Games for Love is a wonderful way to get experience. You can actually come in and build games with us. We always have something in development. Um, and get connected to the community in really cool ways. You can come to conventions with us. You can come and run events for us. You can even help put these games into the hands of kids in children's hospitals. Most people volunteer virtually from around the world, which we love and, and hope everybody will come. Many people donate if people want to be part of that experience and, and donate simply funds. Always, of course, that's a really immediate way to help these kids. You know, the average stay in a cancer ward in the U.S. is approximately two and a half months for a kid. And those are two and a half very lonely, very dark, very challenging days and I know having been that kid myself, having in my day, a Game Boy, <laughs> the original folks, the OG, that's right, the gray, the, the big brick that today looks like a, an old Nokia phone you'd have it like in your car or something. That got me through a really tough chapter. Um, and so I know personally why that's so meaningful for people. The second thing that I'm super excited about is a bunch of my friends on LinkedIn for only because we love this industry and we just want people to recover from these layoffs. We're running all kinds of live events. If anybody ever wants to come, I see a couple of people in chat right now. Thank you, Sarab and others, Angeline, uh, who I recognize from some, some of our events. Please come, whether you just wanna come and learn about what's happening in the industry, if you've been displaced and you would love some help with getting access to interviews, to my network, all of us are just here to help each other because we believe in an industry that's taken some hits and we just want to come together as a community. There's no cost associated with any of this thing. Nobody here, we have a very specific prohibition of anyone asking for money or any compensation. 
So come in, get help, and just join in a community that I'm so proud to be part of. This is beautiful, John. And it's beautiful to see this type of approach towards a community, which is very inclusive, very helpful, and can help a lot. And you are the head of people and culture at Games for Love. This is a, a very exciting role for all the industry to refer to you and to and to refer to, to, to Game for Love. So it's a very important role that you're playing. And even more in a, in a time where technology is, is reshaping a lot of our lives, the daily lives, the daily jobs, AI is predominant now. It's a topic. Blockchain is a topic. Gaming is a topic. Uh, technology as a whole. And I see personally, I wanted your feedback that all of this time of changing can also bring new entrepreneurial idea. And so it can shape a lot of us to have out of the box idea. W what are you seeing from the, and what advice can you offer from the new entrepreneur in the gaming sector? Mm. Two pieces of advice come to mind. And, and I say this from a, this is exactly what I'm sharing at USC at UC Riverside, which is a school here in California, and a couple of other schools that I you get to talk with, some of whom I actually attended. And so I, I actually get to talk to people who are just coming into the professional world or who are about to be, or who went through the United States military and are now about to enter into a civilian sector after an education program. So this question I love answering, and I try to always have two specifics because otherwise it's way too abstract. So here are the two things that I recommend for somebody to consider who wants to sort of lead their target with games. One is super simple. Take an hour a day and play with AI. An hour a day. And it doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be just fooling around on GPT-4 and just making it do like funny impressions of your favorite celebrities. Whatever you're doing. Or you could be super advanced and you could be literally learning how to Code in SQL, you could be building databases that are being used to train these incredible large learning models. Anywhere in between on that spectrum is valuable for you right now because nobody can keep track of how fast things are changing. Nobody, not your favorite website, not your favorite blogger, not even like major corporations who are developing things so quickly that the person next to them, the corporation next to them already made it 30 seconds before they did. It's bananas. So. To stay in this thing, just play. Just go in and check out how you can have AI-based scheduling and how you can use AI to make your presentations. Be careful. Like, don't, don't make AI your world. Like, don't, don't go throwing out those, you know, LinkedIn and Twitter posts that are clearly made by AI. AI images are certainly cultivating a lot of conversation right now. There's a lot of criticism about people, even gaming companies that are using AI images in a way that's disingenuous. Call it out. Look, say if you if you made an AI art piece that you want to show off in whatever capacity, claim it. Make sure you're not trying to represent yourself as the artist. And that's going to go a long way toward creating some uh, some authenticity. So that's number one. An hour a day, play with AI in whatever way is meaningful to you and go for it. And two, when it comes to sort of entrepreneurs in the gaming space, is thinking about the engines and the market trends that are happening in games by looking at the most current games and where investment is going. And, and I want to dwell on that investment piece for a little while because that I can say very readily, that's what guided me towards looking at Web3. When I started to talk to some of the larger investment organizations like A16Z, uh, Anderson Horowitz is a major VC here in the United States. Um, they have their Games Fund 1 which is a massive games fund that's currently powering several studios who are making some of the coolest stuff, including a lot of Web3 games, by the way. And then you look in towards, and, and that's just the US alone. There's, there's probably, a, I'd say, three, $400 million actively supporting Web3 and other sort of bleeding edge games in the United States. When you look overseas to other parts of this world, particularly developing parts of the world, which are certain parts of Southeast Asia, there is at least one and a half billion dollars that went towards Web3 game development in the last year in Southeast Asia alone. And so that's brand new. That is that is a huge amount of capital and trust in an industry that is growing so fast that who knows what this thing could be. I'm pumped not to know. 
Like all, all I know is I see all of these things happening and it's like watching rain on very fertile soil. Who knows what's going to grow? I don't, but it's going to be super exciting. And I want to be there ready to harvest whatever that is alongside everybody here. If someone's entrepreneurial and wants to make money in this, that's also going to be how you can watch what studios to invest in, even what games you want to play that are going to be big and, and, and fun. If you're a streamer and you want to know what to start playing before anybody else so that you're there when it pops, which is its own form of entrepreneurialism. And then one day, if you want to be the first to get items that you can rent out on your page, or you want to be the first to have your showcase that people can come and visit and, and you get compensated for this stuff. All, all of this is to say, to participate in an economy we're only starting to understand, put yourself in a position to be part of that economy in a way that's meaningful. Thank you, John. Very hands-on advice. And so the first is getting practical skills. Use technology, try out, even if it's very limited time a day, but try to do stuff. Um, completely agree. Second one is play, meaning don't don't just think, but try and do mistakes. And as, and on this, is it play.gaming already gone? I think it's a beautiful domain. Uh, I know if people can search for it. I think there was a link somewhere. Yeah, at the very top there, you can see. Yep, there's a, a link you can click and see if, you said play.gaming? Mm -hmm. I was shocked if that was still available because that's actually the name of a studio. That That is the way people are investing is actually buying studio names and um, you know maybe building for them and then selling that to them later. Um, let's see, actually. So if we follow that link up on the top, here, I'll search for it right now. When you say you just need to play, then I thought like, wow, that 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 it's an amazing domain, you know? Yeah, I mean, I would I would imagine if Play Gaming is available, it's it's probably one of the one of the more desirable ones. I agree. And it looks like survey says it is actually available and it is eligible for the twenty five percent off coupon as well. So that is that might be something beautiful that someone chooses to get. <laughs> yeah. And that person might at the end of the bitch. call. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And John, um, I would go to the question and to the question and answer because I see that we are receiving a lot of questions and they are nice questions. But before that, to thank all the viewers that are with us here on LinkedIn, on X, on YouTube, um, we have something to announce, which is something that you envisage to thank all the community. And so um, we are super hyped to do this. I will leave you, John, to announce what we have in plan together. Yes, indeed. So the free name folks have seen an awesome opportunity here to kind of recognize everybody who's here at the very beginning of all this stuff. And the first 10 people, I, and, and Davide, please correct me if I'm, if I'm at all sideways on any part of this, but we are going to give away 10 free custom t-shirts to the first 10 people that register on dot gaming and you get a free customized shirt that actually says your dot gaming across the top of your shirt. So you would get Davide dot gaming or Sorab dot gaming or Wendy dot gaming. Uh, and that'll be sent right to your house for free. Correct. Plus we are giving away 10 dot gaming domain on the first 10 that we register after this call or in the while of this call to freename.io or drop an email here on the comment we will reach you out with the domain drop on the dot gaming details so this is wonderful to hear dot gaming is here for stay and there is a huge audience huge play and huge usage you can save all of your metadata with your domain so i have david.game john for example and i'm saving a bit a bit of metadata even though right now the industry is starting adopting blockchain so i need to do by hand but i find useful because if i bring my domain to one wallet or to another from one dub to another we still always have my data on it so it's my it's my david gaming uh, address uh, no matter what i own it i don't pay renewal fees not like a normal domain so for me it's perfect and as I showed you, it works also on internet. So beautiful. I can have my landing page with all of my gaming points. Um, okay. Well, thank you, John. Uh, we should go to the question and answer. 
let's see. Wow, okay, there are a lot of questions. Perhaps here's something. Um, sort up. I leave John addressing this question. So we've got, what are your thoughts on the potential security issues with Web3 gaming? You know, it's interesting how Web3 creates an environment where we have new concerns and new securities. When you have a decentralized web, there is no, you know, your, your site, your domain is yours. And what Davide was just talking about across wallets, you, you could have various wallets, but usually people have, you know, a central one that you've minted any Web3, anything blockchain is minted to you. And that could be an NFT that you bought. That could be a .gaming domain. That could be a whole bunch of different things. Really, anything could be attached to the blockchain. Uh, even, believe it or not, in the real world, some of the like luxury goods, they're using NFTs to prove the non-fungibility of their products. So if you go into certain luxury goods stores, there will be an NFT chip, an NFC chip that has an NFT attached to it that proves that you owned that, say, $5,000 purse. That way, when you're going to sell that thing, you actually transfer the ownership of that uh, in a way that's super meaningful. There are some cutting edge car companies who are doing the same thing. And the reason they're doing this is actually the security. It is the non-fungibility. Once it's in everyone's world and everyone's call it the blockchain, um, then it can't be faked. It can't be falsified. In a world where it's so hard to tell if anything is real, including any videos you see thanks to deep fakes, including any art you see thanks to all kinds of things. In that world, it's pretty awesome to think that there's technology that's actually creating impossible to forge things for your identity. So that's uh, inspiring to me. So Rob, with that though, the opposite is, you know, if you give away your wallet or if, you, if somebody gets access to your wallet, you, you have to guard that very jealously. You have to be careful with that. There's ways to recover, but I, I certainly would would rather somebody stole my physical wallet with all my credit cards in it and have like a free day than for them to get access to my actual, my Polygon wallet. Thank you, John, for replying. Let's see next question. What was the most life-changing game you played? Great question. I wanted to ask that too. Thanks for advancing me. John. Do you want to go first on this one, David? I've been doing all the talking, man, and you have a much more elegant voice than I do. What, what, what game has influenced you the most? Uh, I think I liked a lot the old version of Final Fantasy. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Are they we talking about like music? Three, seven? No, the seven and the eight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> beautiful music. Very calm. It was not like I remember the first street fights. They were all hyped. Instead, like playing Final Fantasy was more long hours and discovery. Um, and that I think it I liked it particularly. Man, that's so good. So uh, it looks like this is asked by Motivation Mosaic. What a cool name. Motivation Mosaic. I, I actually I can't I cannot give one to this. This is like asking your favorite child. Like who's your favorite child? I you can't do it. Three games come to mind. One is absolutely Pokemon Red, which I actually have the original Pokemon Red cartridge that I played in the hospital right over here. Uh, I don't want to go off camera to grab it. That's what got me through that hospital stay that led me to ultimately really connect with the story of Games for Love. So that one changed my life for the better and I possibly saved my life, just to be perfectly frank. Um, second game would have to be Secret of Mana. Uh, if anybody here speaking of music, way back in the Square Enix days, um, if you haven't played Secret of Mana, oh man, talk about it. It's just, I can't say enough about it. It's like trying to describe your favorite food. You just get lost thinking about it. Um, and then of course is World of Warcraft. That's the MMORPG I've played the most in my lifetime. I have so many memories of community, of downing bosses for the first time with my guild for, you know, just having a place to go in a virtual world that I don't have to be myself, but I can still be someone that has a lot of accomplishment and a community, but I don't ever have to actually be my physical self in case maybe I don't show up online the way I show up in the real world. And I just, I love that you can be whatever you want to be and you can just all win together or fail together and then yell at each other after you wipe the raid, which happens for sure. But those are my three. Such a good question. Thank you. 
Brian asks, if .gamer domain was not a thing, what other domain would you have? Ah, Ooh. so like .play, that's not bad. Like the word play, it's, uh, it's not a bad word. Um, anything else, John, in your mind? Yeah, I mean, so dot, dot gaming is the one that obviously y'all are, are, are featuring here, which is super exciting. And those, that's the one that we're going to do this domain drop for, which if you look on there, you know, some of these domains can be up to a thousand plus dollars. So we're going to be giving some of these away here, which is really exciting. If not dot gaming, you know, I, I've, I've over the last say year, I've certainly uh, bulked out my portfolio. And so the ones I'm excited about are dot crypto that has been a really exciting one dot satoshi has been really cool i tend to really go to the free name page and watch for trends in where people are are really sort of buying more because that to me says oh this is going to be a domain that could be really worth something one day um especially if it's a a name of a like an entity like one person may want this one day or if it's something i think a business might want to be able to claim um that for me i look toward the future and say that's a world where this, you know, 30 or $40 I'm investing right now, much like any domain flipping could one day be worth $40,000 or, or, or more, right? Like they, at some point, somebody owned google.com, right? And they were, it wasn't Google. They notoriously had to pay for this thing twice. Funny enough, somebody actually ranted it to them when they didn't register uh, with ICANN. But that's the beautiful thing about this too. You don't have to register your web three domain over and over again. If you forget to pay it or you sweat credit cards or something, your current web two websites can vanish out from under you. You don't own those websites. You're renting those. You're leasing them basically because I can, who is the sort of governmental body that, that regulates all those. Look, if you don't pay for the domain upkeep, it goes back into the ether and somebody else can buy it out from under you just like that. Um, not so with blockchain. Once you buy that domain, and it's linked to you and you've paid the gas fees and everything for it to be minted, it's yours, um, which I think is is really important because I don't I don't love that yearly pay for the Web2 world. I'm excited to not do that anymore. <laughs> While gaming can be a male dominated demographic, can you talk about how girls and women have taken to gaming, both playing and building and creating? Oh man, Paige, two for two on awesome comments and shares here. So I believe, and Davide, you're going to have to, I'm going to give you free reign to pause me because I will talk about this topic for the next 45 hours, certainly 45 minutes. Not too um, long. Please, please. Paige, here's the thing. There's a couple of things that have happened that are not awesome that I believe will lead to awesome. And this is a male dominated industry. And it's one where you see certain companies making meaningful change through meaningful efforts in representation, in creating access. Um, you see amazing organizations like Women in Games, WIG, uh, which is an organization I know you can find on LinkedIn and several other places. The CDGA, amazing, all kinds of awesome um, uh, resources out there for a variety of different underrepresented groups. I believe the most robust resources are there for female identifying and presenting hopeful joinings, uh, people who want to join this industry. Now, here's the thing. These layoffs that have happened, it, it's been, a, for anybody who hasn't been sort of seeing this happen, it has been a wild ride in games. We've had somewhere in the neighborhood of 27,000 people have lost their jobs in games in the space of the last year. Now that includes studio closures, that includes layoffs, that includes a lot of market factors that aren't necessarily just attributable to decisions made by those companies. But it is unfortunately the case most of the time. These are decisions, not just market circumstances. Um, a disproportionate number of those individuals in my observation would fall into protected classes and, and maybe underrepresented groups in the first place. If you, especially if you apply first one and last one out methodology, which many of these companies have, of course, if you've been working hard to create opportunity, the first people, the last people in being the first people out means that you're eating into all this representation that you've worked hard to accomplish. So soapbox moment aside, what does that all boil down to? In my opinion, that means that brilliant people who've worked really hard to get into this industry, an unprecedented number of those people are now free agents. And so when this sort of thing happens, it's like a field of dandelions getting rocked by an earthquake. 
all of a sudden there's all this incredible talent up in the air and winds that are going to blow them all over the place. But the stuff that we're going to see, the games that we get to play in the next couple of years, I truly believe will include the most vibrant representation, both in who's creating them and who's displayed on them, who you can be, who you can manifest and maybe even understand better by playing. Um, and that's for our queer community. That is for female presenting and identifying people. That is for people of color. That is for everyone who isn't necessarily represented very well in games. I believe we're entering into a golden era, and I hope so. I, and I, I personally am trying to do everything I can to make that the reality. I totally agree, and thanks, Paige, for bringing this question onwards. Uh, let's see other questions. Let me check directly. Emily, how do you think that gaming domain can help you building a community? Great question. Um, let me share a bit on the principle of having your own TLDs for your own community. As John said before, if we think about gaming, right, you want to add technology to the games, whether that is AI or blockchain. In, in this case, having your own community with a name allows you to create circles in, internally and create usability with the blockchain powers. So on the dot gaming, you can create a community, which is the dot gaming community. But if you want to create a community on the PVP, you can have dot PVP or the name of your game, for example, and reward your gamers, uh, allowing them to do asset transfer, uh, meaning, as John said before, to lend out few items or to use it as your personal gaming profile or your personal gamer uh, landing page like a link tree so there is a whole spectrum of things that technology enables with the domain and the tld attached for you to make your own statement your own name as a community i want also to leave john point of view on this because he's um he's put on 100 percent the things he said Oh, David, if, if I'm supposed to have more technical knowledge than you, we're going to be here for a long time waiting for that to happen. Oh, my gosh. I, I mean, you nailed it. And ultimately, it's just sort of a centralization of identity. And and I, uh, Emily, right? Uh, I just want to make sure I'm saying the right name. Uh, Emily, it's a great question. And honestly, I think as building a brand is a term that's used a lot. I, I believe brand and community are increasingly synonymous in this sort of world of, of true social media, or at least as this one person understands it. And I think that as you're building a brand slash a community, having a central identity around which to do that is really important. And I think if you look at some of your bigger streamers, which are maybe the best example of this, what do they have? They've got their Twitch account, which is probably their most active username, possibly on YouTube or, or Kick. And then they've got a Discord, usually a Discord, right? Or some other, may, maybe a Facebook group, um, maybe if they're more generationally similar to me, they'd have a Facebook group, but usually it's going to be a discord. And that is again, a central community gathering place. And so now if you layer on what web three is becoming and already is, and is largely now becoming more for everybody, you add in what Davide just said into a, a discord community. And now you have the ability for people to lend items to each other within that community to buy and sell things within that small group. And as such benefit more and help each other more. And in some cases, even possibly sustain themselves professionally. Um, there's something like a $180 million industry called boosting that I would love to, we, if we were here forever, I'd talk about this all day, but we should actually do a domain drop here in a second, uh, which we will, which we'll do. But uh, if anybody's ever curious, learn about the boosting industry. Um, and it gives you kind of a view into how people are monetizing the value of your time that is sort of being lost right now, largely just because we do something and then it's gone. Um, just as an interesting thing, but Emily, I hope that answered your question. Davide, is it okay if we give away two domains right now? Let's do, let's do. All right, folks. So I'm going to go up and make sure that we've got the right link here. We're gonna use the link that was shared up at the very top. I'm gonna test it to make sure it works. So this is not a follow this for nothing. Perfect. So this should work on mobile. This should work on desktop. If you go here and you are, looks like it's saying it's failed to post. Uh, 
if our producer or Davide, if you would be able to share that um, that domain, it's the very top comment, the very first comment uh, made. Um, Let me check. If you, I'm sort of slow walking it right now as we get it on screen, so I'm stalling. So here's the deal. Once this goes up on screen and you've got the link, or if you found that link, if you're clever there, oh, there it is, just posted. If you go on there and you search your name and it isn't already taken and you put it in chat right now, the first two people to do that, get that for free. And that could be worth $1,000. So this is a very valuable opportunity. I'm jealous because if, <laughs> I wish I was John not gaming in the audience right now. Um, but there you go. And the, the free name.io team will uh, get that to you. Uh, we'll message you individually and we'll get your personal details so we can get that minted over to your wallet. And I see also in the chat, somebody wrote their email. So we are aware of that. As said before, let's go to this link, subscribe. These are the very first two domains. And then we we'll continue until 10 domains are given. This is beautiful. And remember also there is a discount on 25% on the dot gaming. If you want more, please check on the Freename.io website. It's all about the dot gaming at the moment. Um, Looks like we have our second nice. winner, Angeline.gaming. Nice. Uh, John, I wanted to add you also on the question before that a lot of functionalities are already active. Um, you can organize your Web3 conferences between people with the same assets. So you can say, I want a room for us to speak in the, in, in the Web3 like we're speaking now, but just with your wallet. So no email, no name, just your wallet. And you can do that as a closed .gaming community, for example. Or there are functions already that you can utilize to do giveaways to particular cluster of people. So the .gaming, the .pvp, the .play. I don't know, I, I do have 2000 ideas for that already, but um, you can see that going. Yeah. We have the last eight minutes, so Let's go other two questions and let's drop other domains. Absolutely. A uh, friendly reminder too, the first 10 people who show their their domains that they have registered, even if you've already done it before, uh, if you've got your .gaming domain, the free name team is actually going to send you a free t-shirt, which is really exciting. Where, where can we see? Ah, here, here, here. Sorry, I lost my chat. So let me take some question out of the chat because I saw some very interesting. Infiniverse, yes, that's a great name. I see Angelina and uh, others that are adding their email, well noted. Somebody, John, asked you if you have a game that you must play all of your life, what that game would be? One. Oh, man, that's a hard one. Yeah. Oh, if, if it's the game I have to play, that I get to play for the rest of my life, I would have to say, oh, man, it has to be something that evolves, right? Like, it has to grow. I hate to just be the World of Warcraft guy here, but I would probably say it would have to be something social that has intellectual property that is sort of durable, that isn't just like the graphics that are the best at the time, but it's recognizable style games like final fantasy's entire catalog um right now it would be baldur's gate 3 because there's an almost infinite number of things that you can do um you're looking at people who are streaming they're on their third fourth fifth sixth tenth playthrough and they're still all over the place finding new things which is just amazing so much fun so i i would say if i have to give one answer baldur's gate 3 right now nice Oh, this is great. Angeline, one of our winners of a free .gaming domain, uh, mentions, I scooped legal TLDs thinking blockchain would be used for first level legal agreements through smart contracts. Perfect application of .gaming and, or, or any sort of uh, domain. But .gaming, for example, being a place where you could, to David, Davide's point, organize your groups, build your community around, much like the way you're talking about creating like le service level agreements through smart contracts. That's that's fantastic. You can, and there are the very first experiment of legal agreements sent through a transaction. 
so you can send from a domain to another, whether is that a legal agreement or a agreement between parties, you can do. Um, Angelina, we can send you some material to look at it. Some other question. Uh, what advice would you give to developers transitioning from traditional to Web3 gaming? This is specific job. Ooh, developers. So a lot of what we're seeing as it's currently defined, and it's so funny, some of these answers, it's just like with AI, it's almost going to be a different answer by the time somebody sees it from the time that you say it. So it's almost going to be obsolete no matter what. I would say, though, that really getting savvy, you know, the, the two big engines really are, are Unreal Engine, UE, and Unity. Um, both have had some some challenges in the last year, particularly Unity um, earlier this month with it with a with a layoff. Um, but that said, past business practice and instead focusing on product, you really don't have much competition there in terms of environments or, or engines to learn around. Um, but I will say that there's a lot of people that can make great games. There's not a lot of people that understand blockchain as it pertains to games. So I think that the people that are going to benefit the most are the people that will have the most balanced knowledge between those two. And maybe that's not the, you know, super advanced career developer from a AAA game studio like Nintendo or PlayStation or something like that. Um, uh, PlayStation being, of course, a hardware producer, not necessarily a game studio, but they have a lot of folks that they support. Anyway, uh, I would take that person and I would rather see... I would rather personally invest in the person who had like a four out of 10 blockchain, four out of 10 games versus a 10 out of 10 games and zero out of 10 blockchain or even nine and one. Like, give me that four and four, which is a total, a lower total. And I think that that's going to be really great. I'm thinking of like people as Dungeons and Dragons characters now. And so that's where these numbers are coming from, to be perfectly transparent. <laughs> Thank you, John, addressing that. I think, guys, we have the last question. And then we need to wrap this up. Uh, OK, I go for the last question. If you could be a gamer character, what will, would you like to be? Ooh, that's a, that's a fun one. Um, I would say, so any game character, how is it phrased? If you could be a game character. Any. What would you like to be? Woo, boy, that is. Some days I want to be like an NPC in a remote village in an, an MMORPG that's literally just there to sell you like a fishing lure or something like that, particularly anywhere that it's raining. I think right now that sounds particularly peaceful. I would like to be there with, with my daughter and my partner and just sitting there on a shore in like some distant corner of Azeroth, for example. I mean, we're like a fishing trainer. We teach you how to catch like the oily sea bass or something like that. If it was going to be a, a full on game and like an actual character, you mentioned my my favorite protagonist character is one from a game you mentioned, Davide, and that's Cloud Strife from Final Fantasy VII. I've just always like there's something about that adventure, especially since it's been retold in a couple different ways now that I just always thought was so cool. So, yeah, Cloud Strife. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that with us. And that was the last question closing this session. But before we close, guys, uh, thank you a lot, John, and thanks everyone for participating, uh, for all the questions and <laughs> to, to understand more what John did, what all the industry is developing and where we see the industry going, where we see the potential of new technology. This was awesome very much john thank you very much uh we want to remind to go on the link again that we have prepared for you to get the dot gaming domains if we can have that link once again showing up on the screen please uh i don't know how to do and please stay close to john with us on linkedin telegram youtube apply from that link uh here it is um on the gaming.landing.typedream app. You can insert there your email and got your .gaming domain from us dropped. No cost for a very good domain and have your own t-shirt and hoodies prepared with your .gaming domain. 
John, thank you very much for replying and being so open and transparent with all of us. Thank you, Davide. This has been a blast. Always so excited to talk about the future. So pumped to work with you guys. Thanks for all you've done for the community in ways we, we didn't even get to talk about here that are a big part of why I'm here. Um, big congrats to our winners. I see Wendy Prantner is messaging on the side. So there's another winner right there. Big big ups to all of our, our, uh, our winners. And um, yeah, anyone who ever wants to, to connect, feel free to connect with me. I'm nerd work just started a twitch channel to start streaming some of the career support stuff we're doing on linkedin all free all the time it's just about the community so come by on linkedin come by on twitch come by on youtube come and hang out thank you john thank you everyone